Hi, hello, and welcome to the first episode of Just Curious Relationships. I am your host, Megan Holmgren, and today we are going to be jumping right in talking about all things aging relationships, relationships as you age, uh, and this podcast is going to be a little bit different. So what we're going to do is uh, take what I have scoured from the corners of Reddit and what real life people have posted about their relationships and pose the situations as questions to a marriage and family therapist who I have sitting across me right now, Margaret Doherty. So thank you for coming and welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. I am very excited to be starting this podcast and to be starting it with you here across from me and to be diving in. I'm, I'm really excited about the story that we're going to talk about today. So we'll get started. Sounds good. Okay. I found this one, as I said, on Reddit. Uh, and the title is, I, 45 female, keep feeling hurt by my husband's 45 male view that we both are old and fat. Okay. But I'm not sure if I'm being unreasonable because it's kind of true, I guess. We've been married for eight years. For context, I don't think either of us are fat, but we both are overweight. More context. I am five foot seven and 185 pounds, and he is a bit taller and a bit heavier, but I've never thought of him as fat. In fact, to me, he's very attractive. He doesn't like how he looks in many areas. He hates that he's balding. He doesn't like his nose, he thinks his ears stick out too much, and he really, really hates the lines on his forehead and will often actually get Botox. As for me, I'm well aware that I'm not a beauty pageant contestant. I'm actually fairly average looking, but I like how I look. And when I look in the mirror, I usually like how I look, more or less. I think I have very nice hair and eyes, and even if I'm overweight, I think I have good proportions. I don't think he likes how either of us look, actually. He never compliments me, but beyond that, he often makes comments about himself and includes me in them. Some examples of recent. We went out to dinner, and the waitress mentioned a certain dish was a large serving, and he said, quote, Well, look at us. We clearly both love large servings. It was a joke. I get it. But also, as an aside, I actually try to eat healthy, and I don't typically love large servings. We were shopping for a new mattress, and he told the salesperson, quote, as you can see, we will need an extra large mattress because we're both supersized. Again, I know it was a joke. He was going through his phone and mentioned we barely have any pictures together. He said, quote, have you noticed that we don't take many pictures? I guess probably because we both are so decrepit. I know all these are jokes but he makes these types of jokes frequently, and I know he puts me in the, quote, fat, old, and dumpy category with him. And I don't even think any of, those thing, any of those things about him, but I don't love that he clearly thinks that about me. I know how he feels about his own looks, and apparently he feels the same about how I look. The other day, he was scrolling through social media, and he said, quote, it's so weird when women our age take, still take selfies. They think they are still young and beautiful. I said I thought several women in our age category are still quite beautiful. He said, rarely. On top of it all, on the weekend he was talking about how one of his friends, our age, started dating a woman in her 30s and was posting lots of pictures of her. I forget the exact conversation, but the end of it was that he said, sure, he sure would like to have a beautiful woman to show off to make everyone envious of him, but in truth, he much prefers having me because we have true love between us. Um, okay, that feels like a total insult, though. And no, he's never shown me off in any way. There are barely any pics of me on his Facebook, but for the record, his ex-girlfriend prior to me was, in his eyes, a knockout, and he posted so many pictures of her. I don't know what to make of all this. Should I care that he thinks I'm old and as unattractive as he thinks he is? This feels ridiculous, but it honestly is bothering me. Too long didn't read. Husband clearly thinks I'm old and fat. Too long didn't read. I love that. <laughs> TLDR is what she wrote, but I, I, uh... I actually didn't know what that meant. Oh. <laughs> there you go. So now I know I can skip through when I'm doing my own Reddit stuff. Yes. So you can scroll to the bottom and find that, or sometimes at the top. Um, but so, okay. So that's the question, or not necessarily the question, but the situation. Yeah. 
And to me, kind of as an, an observer or a Reddit user, peruser, and reader, um, this sounds like a pretty toxic relationship at any age. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm curious what your take is here. Is her husband in the wrong? Or is this just like a severe case of someone projecting their own low self-confidence and poor body image on another person, you know, someone that they're friends with, or in this case, a romantic partner? There's so much here. There's so much to unpack. <laughs> um, I was sitting here and I was like, okay, this is more than just the I'm 45, ugly, fat, all of that kind of stuff. So first off, if it's bothering her, she mm -hmm. needs to say something, right? Because she keeps saying in this post, at least, it's a joke. I know he's joking. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like she's not saying anything. Yep. And she's just getting angrier and angrier and angrier. Yeah. And what I work with my couples on is those little things become big things before you know it. Yeah. Then you're blowing up about probably a small thing, but it's seven other things and that eighth thing. And your partner's like, I didn't know that this was a problem because you never said it. So. Right. She is not ridiculous, and she needs to say something. That's first and foremost. Um, it's hard here because we all get older, mm -hmm. right? Like, if we're not getting older, we're dead. So it's yeah. good to get older. Yeah, true. And we are not where we are when we're 20. We're not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I think that he, this husband, is struggling with the fact that he is 45. Yeah. I, if you want to use like midlife crisis, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. balding, huge thing for men. They like freak out the minute they can like see their scalp. Yeah. And it's harder to lose weight the older that you get. Yeah. So it sounds like he's doing a lot of projecting onto her. Mm -hmm. And she's not standing up to him and saying, I'm okay with how I am. Are you okay with how I am? And yeah. if you're not, like then a conversation needs to happen. Yeah. And why does he feel so negatively about himself? Right. And does he actually feel negatively about her? I think that's my question. Like, does he... I don't think so. I think okay. he is insecure about it. So he'd rather lump the two of them together mm -hmm. than just keep it all by himself. Yeah. And the humor, I mean, that's such deflection and avoidance yeah. of like the real emotion that's going on. Yeah. If I make a joke about it before the waitress does then I win, right? And I can't like, be laughed at. I'm being laughed with. Right. I can't okay. be hurt because I made the joke. Right. And I don't want to make the joke just about me because then I'm lonely. Yeah. So let me pull in my partner who also isn't saying anything. Yeah. So he has no idea that she doesn't want to be lumped in. If she sits there and laughs, yeah. he's like, oh, she thinks it's funny. Oh, it's okay. Right. And it's not. It clearly is not. <laughs> clearly is not. Yeah. Um. So I guess, you know, in this, in this, the poster is, if she was sitting in the chair across from you right yeah. now, how would you counsel her to bring this up? Because it seems like that's not a comfortable conversation to have. That's not an easy conversation to bring up, you know, to say to your partner, whether they are, whether you're in a, a heterosexual relationship or you're, you know, part of the LGBTQ community, no, no matter what, like yeah. we're all humans at the end of the day. And so to turn to your partner who you are spending your life with and, and trust so deeply to say like that really hurt. Mm -hmm. And the, all these comments really hurt a, because you're taking shots at me that I don't, I, I, I don't agree with. Like I don't share that view of myself, but also because you're taking shots at yourself that I also don't agree with. And I, I think, you know, there's something to talk about here, but I, I know if it was me, I don't know how I would broach that topic to start that conversation. So how would you tell her to, if she was sitting in front of me, she's my client. The first question I'm going to say is what's more uncomfortable thinking your husband finds you ugly, unattractive, fat, mm -hmm. or having a conversation with him to figure stuff out. Yeah. Right? Either way, she's going to be uncomfortable. Fair. Be and bringing other people into it, right? Because if they're in these public places and he's making these comments, this isn't just between him and her. It's between whoever else is around to hear that comment. Yeah. And that can be even more mortifying. Yeah. Say she was worried about the way she looked. And he was just intensifying it over and over and over again. I do think a lot of what he's doing is unconscious. I don't think he's doing it to jab at her. Mm -hmm. He's doing very much to make himself feel better about mm -hmm. making a joke with it. So the first thing would be, we're going to be uncomfortable either way. Yeah. Having conversations about this with your partner may take the narrative that you've written in your head and shown you if it's true or not true. 
it would be horrible if it is true, yeah. right? Like, that would be very hurtful. Wouldn't you want to know? Wouldn't yeah. you want to figure it out? Wouldn't you want to say, like, hey, you're making these comments. Let's talk about it. Yeah. And I just made the mistake that I always <laughs> tell my clients not to. I use the word you. So the next thing is. <laughs> I was going to, I wasn't going to call it out, but I was going to call it out and be like, <laughs> what tools? Because I know that's, I know from working with you for, for stuff for the well, that that is one of the rules is. Yes. Don't and use you statements. And see, therapists are also human <laughs> and we make these mistakes. And I like to sh- say that to clients because they're like, I can't talk like that all the time. I'm not asking you to talk mm-hmm. like that all the time. When you really need to get across how you feel, it's important so that your partner doesn't become defensive. Yeah. So saying to him, I feel really hurt when comments are made about my appearance, especially in front of other people, Mm -hmm. is a way to open it up that has nothing to do with him. Right. She's not saying you do this, you do that. It's clearly like I'm hurt. Yeah. These are my feelings. Right. Yeah. It could even be like I'm confused as to why you would even want to joke about your body. Mm-hmm. Right. A different you. Little less defensive. Yeah. But I think the conversation is like, are you OK? Yeah. These are coming up more and more and more. And you never used to say these things. So, like, yeah. how can we talk about it? I feel sad that my partner isn't comfortable in who he is because I love who he is. Mm-hmm. I love your balding head. Mm-hmm. I love. Should you say that, though? Should you say I love your balding head? Or <laughs> I feel like that's going to. Because I, I feel like. could. Yeah. But it also could be endearing mm. maybe towards the end of the conversation. Yeah. Maybe not the way the one you lead in with. No, definitely not the one you lead in with. <laughs> but like as maybe he opens up about mm-hmm. like these are my insecurities. You can reaffirm. These are actually the things I love about yes. you. Yes. Okay. Yes. That makes more sense. Yes. <laughs> you know, maybe I would do it to my partner and uh, we should go to couples therapy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, But I think that what's important for her the most is Mm -hmm. to make sure she says something because this is going to turn into resentment because she's not setting a boundary. Yeah. So the boundary is I don't appreciate when I'm spoken about in this way. Yeah. Not even spoken to that way, but being spoken about. Right. Because I guess and this it sort of spurs a, a question for me in the spoken to and spoken about. How does she know then that in private conversations where she's not around, that he's not also making these the same kind of commentary about her and about himself to their friends or family or people that he meets? You know, how does she know that this sort of um, self-deprecating humor is limited only to when she's there to be kind of in on the joke with him, so to speak, because she hasn't told him that it bothers her? Right. And she doesn't know. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, that's the big thing. She does not know. Yeah. So then it leads into the narrative she's written in her head. And I'm sure that thought has come across her, especially with this friend who has the 30-year-old girlfriend. Yeah. I'm sure she's fearful. Is he going to leave me for a 30-year-old? Yeah. And now she's written this entire story for herself and the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. And he may be like, oh, that's actually not what's going on in my head at all. Like, I'm feeling really insecure about myself. I love you. I think you're beautiful. But he doesn't say that often either. So the need there is, I need to hear that you find me attractive. Yeah. That's a hard need to ask for. Do you think it would be fair for her to, with the I statements, although I I kind of, in my head as I'm thinking about the question, know what the answer is going to be. But, you know, I feel like you don't find me attractive anymore. And that makes me really sad. Is that fair? Because you're then applying like an assumption about what that your partner feels. So what you can do is say, when those comments are made, mm-hmm. I feel sad because I no longer feel attractive to okay. you. Okay. Right? So same premise, turning it around yeah. so they don't get on the defense. Yeah. That's the thing. You don't want your partner to become defensive because then you're going to get into a heated argument. Complain, don't blame. Okay. You can complain about things. Mm-hmm. But once you start blaming... All bets are off. And things might be said on either end that you don't want to say, but you're emotionally flooded. Yeah. When I found this question and and started, you know, kind of looking into it and and sort of the larger topic of aging relationships and relationships as we age, because that seems to sort of be in large part what this is about, right? Absolutely. They're getting older. There's a, you know, body image that comes into it, self-confidence. So I found research actually that I thought was really interesting that shows that the quality 
of our relationships as we age actually improves generally. Mm -hmm. Like, and that we actually need those good relationships to age well, stay alive longer. Um, and so much so to the point where uh, one of the researchers, his name is uh, Louis Casalino, said that, quote, of all the experiences we need to survive and thrive, it is the experience of relating to others that is the most meaningful, important. But that doesn't it doesn't seem like this relationship as it stands right now is one that is good and fulfilling and nourishing for her, for her. We, it, it might true, be, it for, might be him. for him. That's true. Um, but we uh, we can only go off what she's saying. Um, so in this situation, I guess, you know, obviously we said have the conversation. But beyond that, like what can she do or what can someone who finds themselves in a situation like this, what can they do to either say, I got to go, I got to hit the yeah. road, which I'm sure is not everybody's first choice. Right. Um, or how to know if that's a relationship worth saving that's going to be enriching and nourishing and and add those things, especially as you're getting on later in life. Because I feel like if you're talking to someone who's in their 20s or 30s, maybe maybe the approach there is a little bit different. Like maybe you have a bit more avenue to try things. If But does that change as you get older? Like should your, should your um, bandwidth <laughs> – should your bandwidth for for this kind of non, non I don't want to say nonsense it sounds judgy but but for this sort of rhetoric or behavior be less because you need these relationships more later in life. So I think I'm going to answer your question and I might not <laughs> and you can re ask it again. Okay, I was going to um, say I can always rephrase it because I feel like I even got lost a little bit in my thought, but but in general, so they're 45 years old, they're married for eight years. They probably knew each other a little bit before that, even mm -hmm. if it's a year. They met when they were in their 30s, right? So when we're looking at this, you're not supposed to be the same person you are at 35 as you are as 45, mm -hmm. as 55, as 65. So I think in the terms of aging and relationships, yeah, you are picking partners that you can be with when they're 35 and 45 and 55 and 65, yeah. right? And... That means you have to renegotiate your roles. That means you have to relearn each other sometimes. You know what somebody's favorite movie is when you met them at 35 may not be their favorite movie anymore at 45. And I know yeah. that's like a small example, mm -hmm. but things change. People's interests change. Who they are and what's important to them changes as life goes on. Yeah. So you have to have those conversations. You need to renegotiate what this relationship looks like. Mm. It sounds like they're not having any of that. Yeah. So when you get to a point where you're not feeling seen, heard, or validated from your partner, you do have two choices. You can just say, like, this doesn't feel good for me anymore and leave. Mm -hmm. Or you can say, I'm going to work on it because I love this person. We have history, and I do want to be with them as time goes on. Mm -hmm. But this part doesn't feel good. Yeah. Also, we're going to have bad days, months, years in our relationship. They're yeah. not all going to be good all of the time. Maybe he's depressed. Maybe he's anxious. Maybe something's going on at work, right? Like all of these things yeah. that can be contributing to the fact that he feels this way. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean he's going to feel that way at 50. So I think it's knowing that the person you met mm -hmm. won't be the person you marry. The person you marry won't be the person that you're growing old with because everybody is evolving and changing, including yourself. Yeah, I was going to say, it's so to that end, you're also not the person that they met, that they married, that Absolutely they're growing not. with. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. It, I mean, look at all the couples that got together like right before COVID or were like in a relationship for two, three years before COVID, getting ready to get married. Life is great. And then a pandemic hits and they're like, I'm stuck with this person. And this is what they're like. And like, I don't I don't like that about them. Yeah. Because you spent so much time with your partner. It was like your safe person. Exactly. I mean, speaking, I, I'm, I've been married for five years and I can tell you we were together for a long time before that. But the the same thing you know I knew him well I've been married to him for a while and COVID did the same thing so it makes sense that as you go through life you change your partner changes and it's it's just kind of doing that work to make sure your changes are kind of complementary to wanting to one another at very least or or something that you can live with right and, and want to what be can you accept what are you flexible in mm -hmm. and what are you not flexible in and right. I think that you can look at that at the larger scheme and also the, sh the smaller scheme when you're having conversations that you feel gridlocked with your partner, like, 
why are we having the same argument over and over and over again? It's what am I not flexible about? And I'll stick to that. But like, what areas can I maybe move a little? Yeah. So maybe she, the movement here would be, don't lump me into these comments. Don't lump me into how you feel about you. Mm -hmm. I can't stop you and I can't change how you feel about you. That's something you have to do. Yeah. So if you're going to make the comment about you, I have to accept that because that's the way that you're going to cope with it. Right. But I don't want you making it about me and it is going to hurt me. It's going to upset me if you do. And if you do that, I am going to let you know, like, I'm hurt. Yeah. Uh, something actually that you just said <laughs> um, that I realize is a, a personality flaw of mine and I have actively tried to work on, but I am... Uh, what you'd probably call a fixer. And so I try to fix everything all the time. So my natural instinct instinct to in, in reading this and talking to you about it is whether she has a conversation with him or not about, you know, I feel this way because I feel unattractive or, or, you know, whatever the case is, is, is there, are there things that she can do to try to help fix how he feels about himself? Like, is something like, I booked us a spin class together, you know, because I thought it'd be fun to go get active. It doesn't even have to be like, I know that you feel bad about yourself, but that's really the underlying intent. At least, it, unless, at he's least gonna know me. that, but he's going to know that that's the underlying <laughs> intent. But so it's, but is that okay? <laughs> if you have a conversation and he's like, I really want to be more active. Mm -hmm. I want to try more exercise classes. And then you say, oh, cool. I'll book you a soul cycle class, like whatever it is. Yeah. You just doing it will probably be like, oh, she also agrees with the way that I'm feeling. Fair. It validates his insecurities, which, interestingly enough, I just looked how the, to not read it, the, what's the TLD? TLD, too long, didn't read. Husband clearly thinks I'm old and fat. That's actually not what this says. Yeah. It actually, that, and then, yeah, that is very telling because it's, a, it's the TLDRs are supposed to be a, a very brief kind of quick Cliff notes, here's what it is. So yeah. you don't have to read it. But there is, there's a lot more to this than just. He's not calling her, not looking at her and going, you're old, you're fat, mm -hmm. I'm unattractive to you. Yeah. Unattracted to you. What she's taking in from his actions, his behaviors, and his words is that. Yeah. That narrative that she's written. Yeah. That's not what's going on, at least from what I can read. Right. From what she's, what has been provided by, <laughs> right. by her and, and the internet. Um, that's not. A, a, an accurate representation of what's happening. And it may be really uncomfortable for her to know that her partner feels this way about himself, mm -hmm. something he has to work through. She can support. She can listen. She can validate that it's hard, right? I mm -hmm. wouldn't necessarily validate you're old, you're balding, right? Like that's, we're, we're old, we're fat. Right. right. None of that. <laughs> but I can. you can validate and say, like, I hear that this is really hard for you. Yeah. Did you think at 45, like, this is the, some of the things you were going to be feeling or thinking? What was, quote, unquote, old to you when you were growing up, right? Mm -hmm. Did you think, like, 65 was old? Yeah. And I wouldn't be feeling any of this until I'm 65 because I think of, like, a grandfather, right? Like, what's going on in his head yeah. that at 45 he's having such trouble with this? Yeah. I guess the other side of that, too, is it, to what you've said and, and to the point you've made, she can't control how he's feeling, right? So she can listen, she can validate, she can be there for him and mm -hmm. support him. But at the end of the day, and and clearly from her, her kind of her own summary of it, is maybe she is, as a result of this, maybe her self-confidence isn't as good as she's portraying it to be. Because mm -hmm. I have to imagine that, like, if, if that's how she's summarizing, that he thinks I'm old and fat, but she has said extensively, I don't think I am. I, I like my hair. I like mm -hmm. parts of my, you know, I like my appearance. I have a good shape. But hearing that over and over has got to take a hit to that. And I think it has knocked it down from mm -hmm. where it was. But that's also hard for her to admit that, like, even his words had that power. Yeah. So what can she do to, for herself then mm -hmm. um, to build that back up? And does it have to be something that she's even, is that part of the conversation? Like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do these things because I want to feel better about the way I look. Because then would that validate his opinions and his, the things that he said? Well, about I think there? if she's going to do anything, if she wants to, mm -hmm. putting it out there like, hey, I'm doing this for me. You don't have to do it either. Right? Like, this is very much a me thing. Mm -hmm. 
just because I'm going to start working out three times a week doesn't mean that that's me telling you that you have to work out three right. times a week. If she is feeling negatively, mm-hmm. sitting with herself, thinking about these thoughts, feeling uncomfortable with them, how did it happen? What are the, some of the thoughts that now are in your head that weren't in there before? Yeah. And remember that they're just thoughts, that you are not your thoughts. Kind of like in a cartoon with like a thought box. Mm-hmm. When you look at that, you don't see the person as the thought. You see the thought above the person. Yeah. That's what thoughts are. They're not us. So like learning how to separate, I'm now having a thought mm-hmm. that I'm old and fat. What evidence is there that I'm old and fat? Mm, nothing. Okay, I'm 45. Like, 45's not old. No. Like, 45 is not old. Yeah, no, definitely not. Even 65's not old anymore. No. So it's it's challenging the thoughts that you now have about yourself and saying, like, is this actually true or am I just leaning into that it's true? Mm-hmm. And I guess how, maybe what are some, and maybe this is what I was, was trying to get at to a, a degree, but, like, how do you catch yourself in those thoughts with like I, I feel like you would need to be aware of it to a, in a, a maybe a little bit more of like an existential way of like oh wait 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 I need to stop mid thought like how do you train your yourself and your brain to stop yourself in those thoughts and identify them just as thoughts time work energy therapy but <laughs> there. And I think people think, okay, now I know I'm having these thoughts. I need to catch them in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's always true. You can have a day where you're having all these negative thoughts. You go to bed at night and you're like, wow, I feel like... uh, feel like crap. You can, you I didn't know if I could curse. Um, I, I didn't know at all. Um, I feel like shit, right? Yeah. And then the next day wake up and say, like, why did I feel like that? Yeah. Okay, what evidence did I have for that thought? What evidence did I have against it? Was I jumping to conclusions before I even tried to look for the evidence? Mm-hmm. Is this going to matter in six months? Yeah. What would I say to a friend, right? It doesn't have to be the moment that you're having the thought right away. Mm -hmm. Because as you practice this, it's going to get closer and closer and closer. To that. That you'll have the thought and be able to say to yourself, okay, I'm having the thought that. Yeah. And you can let it go. Can't give you a time frame of like how long that's going to take. I think everyone's different. But it it takes time and energy. And sometimes you're going to lean into the negative thoughts and you're going to feel like shit. Yeah. And you're human and you can sit in that. That's part of, I guess, the journey with yourself. Yes. Yeah. Sitting in the suck. (laughs) Um, So, you know, we've talked a bunch about and and in the post he talks about um, kind of those themes of of body positivity and self-confidence and self-image. She doesn't explicitly call this out, but it's it's something that I think occurred to me. And I, I wonder your take on it, but. I feel like in this situation or situations like it, intimacy has to take a hit, right? Because that's a situation where you are, uh, you know, trusting someone so completely with in your most vulnerable and kind of laid bare moments. Yeah. Physically, mentally, emotionally. All of it. Um, and if if your partner, for whatever reason, because, right, like we don't know, maybe he does view her this way for real which would be terrible, but, or maybe it is that he views himself that way, but on either side of that coin, I feel like that's got to have a, that's got to translate into their intimate life, whether that's physically intimate or emotionally intimate. So how in situations like this, can couples kind of strengthen and come back from that? So we can assume that's happening. Sometimes it doesn't, Hmm. um, depending on, a person's sexual needs, right? If you're in a relationship where somebody needs sex five times a week, Mm -hmm. sometimes that's just priority and people are able to push that out of their mind. Okay. Um, So many couples that come into me after infidelity are having the best sex of their entire relationship, even though they're so hurt and they're so broken, Mm -hmm. the sex is the best that it's ever been. Interesting. It's a way of connection that's different. So it's more of the physical rather than the, the emotional, re- emotional relationship. Or it's the emotional of like, oh, you were with that person. I want to be with you. I want to show you. I don't want to lose you. Stay with me. Mm-hmm. And it's just so intensified. Okay. So, but if your sex life has taken a hit, I think that's a great starting point. 
Yeah, that might be the easier inroads to that conversation of like, things have been different. Right. Like, we used to have sex three times a week and now we're having sex once a month. What's going on? Yeah. Some people might find that conversation even harder than the you're calling me old and fat. Depending on I guess their depending comfort on your, level. Yeah, I guess depending on your personality and your comfort level. Because for me, I feel like that's something that's like fat. To me, that's based in fact. We were having sex three times a week. Now we're having once a month. What changed here? Right. Rather than I feel, you know, I, I guess for me, like this, the I feels statements and kind of getting into the emotions of things is a little bit harder mm-hmm. to initiate. Right. Um, than just like. We were doing this. Now we're doing this. What what catalyst caused that change? Can we talk about that? And if they're like, I don't know, like I'm tired or I don't have mm-hmm. energy, it could be like, okay, and I feel da 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 Yeah. Right? Like it, it can open the door. Yeah, because then your birdie started. Right. Yeah. And I think that if you're not having the sex that you used to have, and that looks different for every couple, mm-hmm. then emotionally you may not be holding hands, cuddling, those kind of things. If you don't want to bring up sex, if that feels like too much, hey, we don't sit on the couch and cuddle anymore. We're like, I'm on the couch, you're in the chair, we're on our phones. Like, yeah. I, don't, I just don't feel connected to you overall. Yeah. And then when they're like, I, I don't know, like I'm playing Wordle every day, <laughs> like when I get home from work. Yeah. It's okay, but I'm also feeling this. Yeah. And I'm also feeling that. Couples know when they're not having sex, right? Yeah. And sometimes that's a really easy thing to avoid because it's, oh, we got the kids or work or this or that. I had COVID for two weeks, like whatever it is. Yeah. But intimacy goes further than just sex. Yeah. So you can also say we're not even spending time together. Quality time together isn't even happening. Because I can imagine if he's saying those things, she doesn't want to be around him. Yeah. Be like, oh, I'm feeling good today. I don't want to really like hang around him because like I don't want to get hit down. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want my good mood, you know, my vibe. Yeah. <laughs> Paraphrasing pop songs, but, you know, don't kill my vibe, Right, basically. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So then I guess, you know, to say, our, a TLDR of our own, she should care, she's not crazy, mm-hmm. and a conversation needs to be had. Yes. And whether you're in a relationship in your 20s or you're in a relationship in your 60s or beyond. Absolutely. That, mean, that remains the same. That if you're feeling... The way she's feeling in this situation specifically, yeah. that you need to have a conversation. Yeah, and you're not wrong for wanting to have the conversation. You're not crazy for having the conversation. Mm-hmm. It's just a conversation, right? And a conversation doesn't have to be an argument. A conversation doesn't have to be an ultimatum. A conversation can just be a conversation. And there could be numerous, right? Like maybe he gets really heated and you have to walk away from it. Yeah. Okay, then you come back to it and you have a different conversation. This isn't, like, going to be solved in one 15-minute conversation. Yeah, so it's okay to press pause on it. Oh, yeah. Walk away, come back to it when you've mellowed out. Process and process. And and calm and become a little bit more calm and cool and collected. He may not even realize he's doing it to the extent that he's doing it. Right, so he might need time. Absolutely. To to even process all the things that he's said and been feeling Mm -hmm. and and kind of projecting without meaning to. Yeah. Okay, well... Thank you so much Welcome. for taking time and coming to talk to us and uh, having a little bit of Reddit and internet speak. And, and now I things. learned something, so <laughs> I'm all set always, for the day. Those are always the best conversations when you learn something. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.